skeletal muscles are associated with movements of the body. These movements are the result of unique characteristics of skeletal muscle cells. Your goals for learning are to compare and contrast smooth muscle cells, cardiac muscle cells, and skeletal muscle cells. To review the anatomy of the skeletal muscle. To examine the connective tissues associated with skeletal muscle. To review the intracellular organization of the skeletal muscle cell. Here's what you need to know. The definition of connective tissue. The structure of a typical cell. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. The contractile cells of the body can be classified into three major groups, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle cells. These three types of cells can be distinguished on the basis of their shape, number of nuclei, position of nuclei, presence of striations, and whether they are under voluntary or involuntary control. Skeletal muscle has elongated cells with multiple peripheral nuclei. Notice the striations, the light and dark bands, in the photomicrograph. Later we will explore the details of this banding pattern. Skeletal muscle cells are under voluntary control. Cardiac muscle has branching cells with a single central nucleus. Cardiac muscle cells are also striated. Unlike skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle cells are under involuntary control. Smooth muscle cells possess a single nucleus within a spindle-shaped cell. These cells do not have visible striations. Like cardiac muscle, smooth muscle is under involuntary control. The focus of this module will be on the physiology of skeletal muscle. Here we see the brachialis, a skeletal muscle attached to the humerus and ulna by its tendons. For a cutaway view, click the muscle. Let's look at the internal structure of a skeletal muscle. A typical skeletal muscle is composed of an orderly arrangement of connective tissue and contractile cells. The entire muscle is surrounded by an external connective tissue wrapping called the epimysium. The skeletal muscle itself is made up of fascicles, which are bundles of individual muscle cells. Each fascicle is surrounded by a connective tissue layer called the paramysium. Click the fascicle to enlarge it. This view provides a closer look at the internal structure of a fascicle. Recall that fascicles are bundles of muscle cells. Within the fascicle, the third connective tissue layer, the endomysium, separates and electrically insulates the muscle cells from each other. All three connective tissue layers, the endomysium, the paramysium, and epimysium, bind the muscle cells together, providing strength and support to the entire muscle. The connective tissue layers merge at the ends of the muscle and are continuous with the tendons. To continue moving through the levels of skeletal muscle, click on the muscle cell to enlarge it and view its internal organization. Because skeletal muscle cells are elongated, they are often referred to as muscle fibers. Let's look at the internal structure of these unique cells. The nucleus is the cellular structure that contains the genetic material. The sarcolemma is the specific name for the plasma membrane of the muscle cell. The sarcoplasmic reticulum, or SR, is the name for the endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cell. Its interconnecting tubules surround each myofibril like the sleeve of a loosely knit sweater. Terminal cisternae are sac-like regions of the sarcoplasmic reticulum that serve as specialized reservoirs of calcium ions. T 
T-tubules are invaginations of the sarcolemma projecting deep into the muscle cell's interior. Note the visible T-tubule openings on the surface of the sarcolemma. A triad is a three-unit group consisting of one T-tubule lying between two adjacent terminal cisternae. The cytosol is the intracellular fluid in which the organelles are suspended. Mitochondria are cytoplasmic organelles that are sites of ATP synthesis. They are referred to as the powerhouses of the cell. A myofibril is a cylindrical bundle of contractile filaments within the skeletal muscle cell. To review any of these terms, click on the bold red words. Click the myofibril to enlarge it and explore its composition. The myofibrils that are packed into a muscle cell are composed of individual contractile proteins called myofilaments. There are two types of myofilaments. The thin filament is composed mainly of the protein actin. The thick filament is made up chiefly of the protein myosin. Details of thick and thin filament structure are covered in another topic, the sliding filament theory. To examine the arrangement of myofilaments, click the myofibril. The arrangement of thick and thin myofilaments forms light and dark alternating bands along the myofibril. This creates the cell's striated appearance as shown here in this photomicrograph and diagram. Features of the light and dark bands are identified by letters. The dark bands are called A-bands. The A-band corresponds to the length of the thick filaments. The light bands, called I-bands, alternate with the dark bands. The I-band contains only thin filaments and corresponds to the distance between adjacent thick filaments. During muscle contraction, the I-band gets narrower. Each I-band is bisected by a zigzag line called the Z-line. The Z-line is actually a protein disc which anchors the thin filaments and connects adjacent myofibrils. In the middle of each A-band, a lighter stripe appears called the H-zone, corresponding to the region between the thin filaments. The width of the H-zone varies depending on the degree of muscle contraction. It is widest when the muscle is relaxed and stretched. The M-line, located in the center of the H-zone, consists of protein fibers that connect neighboring thick filaments. The region of the myofibril between two successive Z-lines is called a sarcomere. It is the contractile unit of a muscle cell. You will see how a muscle cell contracts in a later topic, the sliding filament theory. Now that we have taken a skeletal muscle apart, let's put it back together, starting with its smallest building blocks, the myofilaments. There are two types of myofilaments, thick and thin. Many of these myofilaments bundled together make up a single myofibril. Numerous myofibrils are contained in a muscle cell or muscle fiber. In turn, many muscle cells are packed into a fascicle. And finally, many fascicles make up a whole skeletal muscle. This bundle within a bundle organization is well suited to the function of skeletal muscle, as we'll see throughout the module. Click a link button to review a structure in more detail. If you use a link button, you can return to the page you started from by clicking the return button. In summary, a whole muscle can be viewed symbolically as a pyramid of subunits. A whole muscle is composed of many smaller units called fascicles. Each fascicle, in turn, contains numerous muscle cells, also called muscle fibers. And as we have seen, each cell is composed of many additional subunits called myofibrils. The smallest and most numerous of all subunits are the myofilaments, which are found within the myofibrils. Here's a summary of what we've covered. The three types of muscle cells in the body are skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. 
skeletal muscle has three layers of connective tissue, epimysium, paramysium, and endomysium. The striations of skeletal muscle cells are due to the organized arrangement of contractile proteins called thick and thin filaments. A whole muscle demonstrates a bundle within a bundle organization from myofilaments to myofibrils to muscle cells to fascicles to the whole muscle. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.